Kei ngā iho iho o ngā maunga whakahi, kei ngā wai whakatere tanifa, nau mai tahuti mai ki te hui. Ko mihi ngā rangi tēnei, e mihi atu nei, kia koutou katoa. Welcome to the hui, Māori current affairs for all New Zealanders. E tarua ke nei. A row over Police 107 has led to more stinging criticism of police. Minister Poto Williams fronts up to discuss allegations of racism in the force. Māori Party co-leader Rawiri Waititi shares his views on mistreatment of mauhere in women's prisons. Because the current system is broken and it continues to feast on the dysfunction it creates. And our panel discusses the crisis in corrections and the Police 107 fallout. Karahui hui mai. Police are back in the headlines, this time over the long-running television series Police 107. Auckland councillor Fa'anana Ifeso Collins has called on TVNZ to cancel the programme, citing its depiction of Māori and Pacifica men, which he says feeds on racial stereotypes. It's since been revealed police have the final say on what goes to air on the TVNZ-funded show. So is it appropriate to be turning policing into entertainment? And will this be included in the new research project police have announced into equity and fairness in policing? To discuss, I'm joined from Wellington by Police Minister Poto Williams. Kia ora na e te mineta. Kia ora na e tēnā koe mihi. Tēnā koe. Do you know if um, programmes like Police 107 will be included into the research uh, that's looking into fairness and equity? I know that uh, the uh, research that we that police are conducting into um, equity will look at a whole range of aspects of police work. Uh, whether uh, 107 is part of that, I can only assume that um, any issues that have been raised in terms of uh, potential um, uh, inequitable uh, responses to um, Māori and Pacific in particular will be included in that. I know that it's a, a, an important aspect of police work to look at where um, those uh, those issues and outcomes for uh, Māori and Pacific in particular are not equitable or equal to others. Do you think um, Police 107 should stay or should it go? Well, um, Police 107 isn't an adequate reflection of what happens in everyday police work. Uh, the work that police do is a lot more about prevention, about building connections um, into the community to actually assist them in the work that they do every day. Uh, police 107 does have a role, and I guess that that is really around um, assisting with the resolution of of crime, uh, but it would be my view that um, if Fana uh, would like to join me perhaps at a police graduation or come and meet with some of the frontline police, he would get a better understanding of the work that the police I, do every I, I, single actually, day. Actually, I think this week he was working with South Auckland Police um, in terms of their community policing, so I think he is involved with police. In terms of um, the, the audience that that programme, Police 107, has, his, his concerns are around, around the way that Māori and Pacifica are framed on it. The Race Relations Commissioner says it's racist. Is he wrong? Um, I know that uh, the Commissioner um, has made his views clear about uh, how he feels about the police. I feel that labels are not only unproductive, but they're unhelpful. What we want to get to is to Minister, ensure that police are about, able to... Um, police, he was talking about the show. And I, I just want to pick up on that, that comment there about labels because I caught up with a highlights reel uh, where I heard the former presenter, Graham Bell, using labels like morons and mongrels goons, apes, scruffy thugs, fat women, lunatics and scumbags. So is that kind of uh, material OK for you? Those, those, uh, that kind of um, uh, programme isn't what happens with the current uh, Police 107. No, don't but get me wrong, I'm not program. saying that that's... Uh, it is also uh, a programme that... Um, 
uh, shows on TVNZ. I, I want to be clear, um, Mihi, this is not an adequate reflection of the work that police do. Um, it, it has its use, and that is around the resolution of crime. But police are out there working with communities to ensure that the harm that, that happens in communities, that we are actually do, kept safe. Do, I, 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 understand, uh, I, I understand that, but in terms of the programme, you say it's not the whole reflection of what happens in policing, but it is, has a huge platform. And, um, you know, and what's important in television is that it's fair and balanced. Do you believe it's fair and balanced? I don't think it adequately reflects, I've, I've said this, I don't think it adequately reflects the work that police do. It has a role, but it is not the sum total of the work that the police do. I mean, I was, you know, I'm very clear about how important the role of police working with communities, working with people, everyday people. I was with um, uh, the, some frontline police in Blenheim recently when they told me about the work that they do dealing with people who are mentally unwell, Mm. people who are harmed by drugs, you know, diverting um, young people from gangs. That's the important um, issue here, that we see police and the, and the work that they do f to keep us safe every day. You talk about um, the Im imbalance, and I, un and, and I imagine that you actually do understand what, um, you know, the imbalance of power is. So I'm wondering what your thoughts around the television contract where police have final editorial say, they're able to change anything they want in there, even if it um, is about their own integrity. Is that something you'd like to see changed? I think um, that the work that the police are doing to look at uh, um, bias within the service, I think that it would be useful that this um, is part of that. But to be fair to the police, uh, they are um, attempting, uh, through the, the work that they're doing in their research, through things like ensuring diversity at, um, in their recruitment, uh, through the work that they're doing to ensure that um, senior leaders and others have got um, training in unconscious bias, that police are working towards um, ensuring that the, that. Uh, what they do as a, as a service is fair and equitable and that they treat everybody with respect. Now, there's so much more that, that they can do. Um, they acknowledge that, and I support them in doing that. How can it be fair and equitable, though, for those people who don't have editorial say about the images and about these stories? And many of them, as you say, are probably in crisis or having um, you know, mental health issues. So you talk about f fairness and equity. I'm asking if this program might come into that or if it deserves to be um, part of that research because, as you say, um, it, it is all about fair and equity. And look, that's exactly, I think, I think we're talking about the same things, at least I hope we are, that in order that the police are able to um, provide uh, a service that uh, respects everybody that comes into that service, that we, as, um, as Māori and Pacific, um, uh, can ensure that the police are working towards, um, as a priority, um, equitable service, that, uh, you know, 10-7 um, should possibly come into that. It should come into um, looking at, at the service as a whole as well, but understanding that what is d displayed uh, is only a small snapshot of what so, actually so, happens so in Minister, everyday policing. So, Minister, should it stay or should it go? Uh, well, that's a decision for both TVNZ and, I guess, the police. Your preference? Uh, well, I'm not really a uh, Police 107 fan. I'm more of a Dog Squad fan yeah. myself. Um, but, uh, you know, look, I think that uh, it has a role to play. Um, it's probably useful for the police to examine that role within the context of the work they are doing around bias. Tēnā koe. Um, thank you for your time this evening. Ko te minita, Poto Williams, tērā. Hei muri inga whakatairanga, ka kōrero hau ki te kaiarahi takirua o te Pāti Māori. Rāwari Waititi joins me next to discuss corrections.
Araki mai anō. Corrections Minister Calvin Davis has ordered an overhaul of the department and ap apologised to three inmates at Auckland Women's Prison after a trial revealed allegations of degrading, cruel and inhumane treatment. In late last year, inmates at Waikiria Prison caused extensive damage to the facility, protesting against decaying conditions, cramped cells and a lack of basic supplies. While the prison muster has dropped significantly over the last two years, prison reformers say more needs to be done to rehabilitate inmates. Nō reira, hei matapaki i tēnei take kei konei, ko te kaiarahi take rua o te Pāti Māori, ko Rāwari Waititi, tēnā koe e te rangatira. Uh, I rungi te kaupapa o Police 107, me noho tonu, me whakakoringi a rā nei. Ah, me whakakoringi a kā tika. He yeah, hai. Um, well, ko te, ko te mea kē, ko tōna tirohanga, uh, ki te tāmitanga o te wii Māori ruti tawa kaupapa rā. He, he kaikiri no tēnā program. Nā te prihi mana e whakaitia hea hanga mea ka hae ki runga i te programu rā. Iwa te kaupai hene ti o te onga tangata ko mau here here tia, ko raru raru i runga i tawa programu, he Māori a nō mga mau tere hoki. Nō rere, ah, he kaikiri ke roto i tēnā, I tēnā, I roto I tēnā programu, nā te mea ko ngā prihi mana kei te whakai, ke hea ha, te whakaturanga, me pēhea rā te whakahari ngā whakahari runga i te, te, te programu rā. For, former Detective um, Tim McKinnell OAA the, the program, uh, OAA'd the police last year and found that actually the police have quite a bit of editorial control. They get to have the final sign-off. They watch the program before it goes to air. Um, is that concerning to you? Absolutely concerning to me. And, and hence why there's been huge uh, uproar by communities to say that's enough. Mm. Um, and uh, it, that's enough of creating a program based on um, you know, entertaining viewers on, the, um, on, on the, uh, the way police treat our people. And so 90% of those people on Police 107 are Māori mm -hmm. and Pacific. And so you know, if they've got total 100% control about who, what's shown on their program, absolutely there's huge um, uh, racial bias in that particular process because mm -hmm. uh, it's our people that's been featured. Yeah. Uh, someone I spoke to this morning, actually, who appeared on Police 107 about six years ago for drink driving convictions, um, his image is still the first thing when you yeah. Google his name today. Is that something that, you know, one of the first steps, perhaps, that once you've paid your dues to society, you're actually, your kanohi should be removed from the internet? Well, I don't see them going to take tax evaders, which are predominantly Pākehā, mm. um, on, on, on any of those programmes. No, they're hitting the streets and they're looking for, and they're shopping for Māori and fishing for Māori and Pacific Islanders. So, you know, this is, this is our opportunity now for, for communities to stand, stand up and um, I, I uh, support a festival in terms of um, you know, bringing this to the fore again. And I know Māori leaders in the past have also said, you know, in the times of Crime Watch, all I remember was Māori uh, medium build. That's all you used to hear on those programmes, and you still hear them today, mm. and say Māori medium build, Māori medium build. And so, um, you know, we've got to stop the dialogue. The problem is our people turn, every, you know, once upon a time was every TV programme, every radio station, every newspaper said how bad we were. Mm. And it's about time we started to tell our people, it is okay. Mm. It is okay to be Māori, it is okay to be a good father, it is okay to be an awesome husband, it is okay to be the provider and the protector of our families. Kapa, let's talk about corrections. Uh, last week, Corrections Minister Calvin Davis issued an apology to those three wahine. Um, good start, do you think? Well, it's a start. But the thing is, um, you, you know, he, he ignored also many reviews, the Ombudsman report from last year, mm. um, also the judgment of the judge uh, earlier on this year uh, to wait for a bureaucratic system to kick in to say, actually, yes, we were wrong. Um, so, you know, yes, it's a start. But, you know, Waikiri was also uh, an example of the inhumane treatment of many of our people, and it's been happening for many, many years. Just because you, you've um, correct Created, um, um, committed a crime, mm. yes, and you must do your time, doesn't mean that you swear all your rights to being human and, you, and then you say, yes, I agree to be treated like, mm. a, like an animal. You, you did intervene back then when we had the protests on the reef at Waikiri mm. over the Christmas period. Are you still working with those families now? What's the update? Absolutely. So um, we've been working with them all the way through. We've um, sent letters out to all of those, the 16, that were involved in that, and we're now going through uh, legal processes with them. Have there been uh, consequences to their actions? I'm sure that there will, and hence why we had to act fast to ensure that they're protected in this particular process. Because at, they were quite clear that this was a protest, um, and it was a protest of the ill treatment that they were being treated. Mihi Bassett and the other women mm. were protesting um, yes. about their treatment. What are some of the things that you were told about the conditions at Waikiri and in, in, in our prisons? Well, again, 
It's, it's, the, it's the same situation. Inhumane treatment is inhumane treatment. This country should be measured mm. on the way it treats its marginalised and its indigenous peoples, not on the way they treat their, those who are doing well, like the housing announcement mm. is just rewarding, um, you know, uh, uh, Pākehā. And again, Māori become, is maintaining to be homeless. So those, those types of announcements and these types of things are just regurgitating. Um, uh, it's not a racist system. Mm. It's racist upholding the system. Mm. And um, this, is, this, is, this is what's coming to light now. Uh, people are not liking it, especially those who, uh, uh, who uphold it. Mm. And uh, what's sad is that we've got our own now upholding it. The strategy to Hokairangi, it's, it's a Māori strategy for Māori outcomes. Um, I guess you just have to shoehorn it into the framework that you have now. Is it something you support as the Māori Party or do you have something different? What I dislike first of all is um, them using our Māori terminology for their kaupapa Pākehā. Um, mm. uh, in the Kopapa system, in the Pākehā system. That's what I don't like. And they've got to stop using our Māori words and decorating their Pākehā system with those Māori words. Hōkairangi, those actually come from Karakia Tawhito. Mm. And um, so I, 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 that grates me every time I hear those things. Te Arapautama, the Māori name for corrections, is a scaffolding. That's all I see, Te Arapautama, as a scaffolding from Oranga Tamariki mm. all the way through to, to our, our jail system. And so if you look at, um, you know, 65% of Māori males, 63% of uh, uh, Māori females make up um, uh, those who are 20 years and under in prison, and they've, 90% of those have all been touched by Oranga um, And We've got a minute left. Give us the policy from the Māori Party. What would you do to transform the pr uh, corrections? Oh, look, the, just, the, pr the, the prison situation isn't happening. But what we need to do is now look at a whole, not, not tinker around the edges, look at a whole transformation process where we can look at rehabilitation. There should be a funnel where final order sitting right in, in, in the beginning parts of those particular, actually stopping it right from the start. Mm -hmm. But actually, if we can't, and we're talking about corrections as an isolated case, is that there should be a funnel where final order sitting there, dealing with me me mental health issues, dealing with educational issues, and then saying, right, Waikiria has been situated as a prison for um, for, for training, Another prison is set up for uh, for agriculture. Another one being set up for academics, mm -hmm. and then we can start putting those people into into a rehabilitative process. But look, the whole system is broken, and like I said, Tarapotama is just a scaffolding system from one end, Oranga Tamariki, all the way through to corrections to, to our jails. Kia mai tonu mai rā, te te tiro e hoa mā, hei muri i ngā whakatairanga, ka wānanga hea ngā take o te pō e tō mātou pai kōrero.
Kei te mā take take koutou i a te hui. Now here to discuss corrections and Police 10-7, I'm joined by our panel, Professor Tracy McIntosh, Auckland Councillor Fa'anana Efesel Collins and People Against Prison spokesperson Emi Rākiti. Tēnā koutou. Let's start with you, Efesel. You called out the show Police 10-7 last week on social media. It really got the ball rolling. <laughs> what did you make of the Minister's comments? Yeah, look, she's admitted that it's inadequate, the, having Police 10-7, and the police have shown through the uh, official information request that was asked for that they've got editorial rights essentially on this. So it's, it's Is very surprising? clear. Yeah, it did surprise me. And so it shows very clearly that the police are, are determining what messages are being sent out. And then at the end of the day, it's feeding racial stereotypes. Mm. If we want a show that's going to promote and advance good quality uh, viewing, then we should be putting on shows like Tangata Pasifika, Marae, Attitude, those, this show, during that the slot. Hui, yeah. yeah, the Hui, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what did you make of the Minister's comments there in terms of, you know, whether, whether it should stay, whether it should go? Yeah, um, uh, I think it was um, a cover-up, right, and trying to run a diversion for the police. Uh, the sh show is an ad inadequate coverage of what the police do mm. uh, because the police kill people, and they don't show that on Police Gen 7. If they want to show honestly what the police do, they should show the extreme rates of racist violence that the police use against our people, not as pro racial propaganda, uh, but to condemn it. That's... Um I mean, it's interesting because the Minister said that there is a place for programmes like 10, uh, Police 107, but obviously there's so much more that they do, which they do. Um, I spoke to a man earlier on this morning who appeared on Police 107. He's from um, Murupara, he's mm. too hoi. Um, he had some driving offences uh, and there was just no way he was going to hand himself in because he was brought up with this understanding of um, his people being invaded by, you know, mm. forces. And um, so he ended up on Police 107. He's now been through rehab. He's also now a rehabilitated uh, counsellor. Mm. Um, and when he Googles his name, it's the first thing that comes mm. up. And so, you know, are, are the police continuing to harm people by allowing this kind of behaviour? Of well, you know, I think that we, you've, got, you've got to recognise where the change got to be. If it's around getting greater levels of collective security and collective safety, is this the way to do it? Mm. If we think about what stuff has done with Tamato Pono, isn't it time, you know, moving forward that we think of new ways of really engaging and reflecting if that indeed is what they want to mm. do? It just seems to me the fact that a blemish can last for such a long time that often what you're seeing is sort of high levels of stupidity, sometimes without a doubt mm. criminal offending and harming of others. But, you know, should a blemish last such a long time? Does it really create the conditions for broader collective security. I don't think it does. In fact, it makes people fearful. So even though we're seeing a decline in a whole range of areas, shows like that largely make people feel unsafe in their own homes. Let's move now to corrections, Emmy. It took a while for the Minister, uh, Calvin Davis, to, to finally apologise and to start to accept um, some of those allegations or the rulings, I mean, of the, of the judge. It's a good start, is it? No, not really, um, because it happens over and over again. Uh, it can't be a start if we do it every few years. Mm -hmm. Calvin himself apologised and started us over again uh, in 2019 with his Hawkeye Rangi plan, which appears to have gone straight in the toilet. Hawkeye Rangi promises minimum conditions for people, um, minimum conditions that shouldn't include being gas bombed in your cell and choked out after you revive from an attempted suicide. The reality is that this is a sternly worded letter that Calvin's written to the Chief Executive of Corrections. Literally anyone could write a sternly worded letter to the Chief Executive of Corrections. Calvin Davis is the minister. He regulates the conduct of the Department of Corrections. We actually sat down and wrote a ministerial directive that would ban the use of pepper spray, mm. would ban the use of solitary confinement, mm. and would ban the use of cell buster um, cell extractions. Calvin hasn't done any of that. Mm. So you've sent that to the minister? We'll send it to him. We'll post it on our social media now. That he could sign this right now if he was here. And it would ban all of those things? It would ban all of them. If you saw when you heard the story of um, Mihi Bassett and the other two women, did you, could you believe you were hearing that in Aotearoa? No, you, you, I'm starting to wonder what country I actually live in. And it's not the way we should be applying a, a, a sense of compassion and love. This is the government that's talking about mm -hmm. show some compassion. And then we've got a minister who I think, with the greatest respect, is just holding his lines. He's got advisers who are making him hold his lines. We saw the same thing with Porter Williams this evening. Mm -hmm. They're holding their lines, they're taking a particular track, and it's not going to provide any healing, which is what we need. Mm -hmm. Is that fair, Tracy? Do you think... Um that's more behind that, or, or, or do you agree with the Fessel? 
I think there's a huge amount of work to do. I've, look, I've known Mihi Bassett since she was 16 years old. Um, you know, I was there on the Friday prior to the Monday going back into court where the um, regional commissioner did give the apology. I saw the way that Mihi, Kama and Tarina responded to those apologies. They were really heartfelt, it was really sincere. But we can't, you know, it's really what Emmy's saying. If, if we create a better condition for those women, and indeed we should, we have an incredible responsibility, but what does it mean for the system? Mm. Do we get real system change? Well, Hawkeye was meant to be a real strategy change for prisons, and it was something that the, this this government campaigned on. And actually, when you read into Hawkeye there are some really amazing um, kaupapa inside of it. But mm. is it about trying to shoehorn an amazing strategy into something that's not allowing it in? Yeah, you can't reform a mass grave. Um, this is another broken promise to Māori. We should be used to this by now. The Crown's first interaction with us was to sign a treaty that they've never honoured. Hokarangi is another uh, empty set of words that isn't worth more than the paper that it was written on. Mm. Less, I got it in an email. What do you think about Rāwari Waititi? He talks about he, similar, you know, he doesn't think Hokarangi is going to fly. Um, excuse the pun. But, um, and, and, they, and he thinks that actually they need to throw it all out and start again. Yeah, and that's always going to be the problem when we're trying to fit things in. And I think that's been the approach we've often taken as we have these clever strategies that come out, the words look good, that we, we think that the outcomes and the outputs of it will look good as well. But it won't fly, mm. using that particular analogy, because it's not designed in such a way where we're going to see the results we really want. Whether we go back to starting again is a question that they're going to have to answer, but I still think we're trying to force into mm. a, a square peg the surround circle. Mm. What do you think about Hawkeye? Do you think that, um, you know, what Rauri Waititi is talking about is actually a whole new ball game? They want um, Māori prisons, they want uh, new strategies. What do we do in the, in the immediate time? I mean, I for people like Mihi Bassett. I, I mean, for the, I think there's a whole range of things for Mihi, for Karma, for Tarina. I mean, astonishing woman, you know, and, and I've I would love to see that in the time that they've got within the system, that there is real, that we can absolutely nourish them, that we recognise and acknowledge the incredible level of harm that's been done, and that with those voices informed to ensure that it doesn't happen to other the other wahine that are in there mm. at the moment, and for our Tane Māori as well. However, you know, if you've got to have a decarceration strategy, it's not fixing the prison, it's fixing everything before mm. the prison. We, you know, the, the notion for me of a Māori prison is a real anathema to me. The idea of having a Māori prison, you know, the commitment must be to ensure that we just don't have people going through the system. You know, I see a lot of good people and what I see is a, a poor system. I think there is the possibilities of change within that system, but the biggest change we have to make is to create the conditions for a just society. I think that's the issue when we talk about prisons, um, corrections and prisoners, people just turn a blind eye. But tell us, what should we know about Mihi Bassett? I mean, Miss, Mihi's an astonishing, astonishing young woman. I, I really loved meeting her whānau the other day. I met her first, as I said, when she was very young. When she came in, she really... Um, you know, we've had a sort of this, this relationship since this time. I have, I've seen the real strengths in her. Um, you know, in terms of her tahamari, in terms of her her ability and knowledge around the kapahaka, all of those elements. It's a real indictment of someone who has so much potential um, has been has been treated in this way. And, you know, and we recognise, as she does, she recognises mm. the harm that she's done. But the harm that's been done to her, the social harm that she experienced prior to come into the prison, and then what's happened within the prison environment, do we truly think that this is, will create the conditions um, for when she goes out that you know, there won't be a, a, a churn through. I do think that there is something that's happened, that there will be a shift for Mihi, mm. but there's many, many other people in there that we need to support. Thank you for shedding light on Mihi, not Missy. I should remember that, my own name. Um, tēnā koutou, thanks for coming on. We've run out of time. Uh, hei ngā wiki, e heke mai nei. There's a severe shortage of water across the Hawke's Bay and the small community of Bridge Pa says they're being left high and dry. When I see no water in my awa, it hurts. But while one community's awa dries up, other industries prosper. Historically, we've had a first-in, first-served approach to allocating fresh water in this country. I'm quite happy with how I am here in my nice leafy little table by my lake, which gives me enough water to see me through. But where does this leave locals in Bridge Park? 
the water has become a greedy tool for governments here to usurp our rangatiratanga. They share their story with the hui. I want to thank all our manuhiri tonight, Poto Williams, Rauri Waititi, and these three wonderful people. Ko hikina te hui mo tēnei po, pai mariri ki a tātou katoa. with support from New Zealand On Air.